Thank you very much, Eric, for, for your pleasure. time. Uh, massive bang of the MMA show just done at Eric Poulsen Seminar here in uh, Scotland, down in Irvine, the Magnum Centre. Um, just got a, a series of questions. Sure. Um, thank you very much. Um, how, how's your seminar tour been going, and uh, how long have you been on the road this time? Uh, it's actually been really good. Um, this is the third place in Scotland I've been to. I have uh, 10 more seminars in uh, England uh, coming up, and everything's been great so far. Everyone's been real happy, training really hard, and it's been a really good year. Excellent, excellent. Um, what are the core skills, beliefs you try to instill in your students? Um, respect, discipline, hard work, sweat's a lubricant of success, uh, tons of repetition, keep your mouth closed, be the one talking, not the one talked about. Be the one, I'm sorry, be the one talked about, not the one talking. Be the one talked about, not the one talking. I like it. Um, do you think that athletes taking part in pro wrestling and competing in MMA damages the sport of MMA and can you see more guys out with the UFC doing this to supplement their income maybe as they get cut for the UFC or that get into the sort of pro wrestling circuits I actually think uh, pro wrestling is it actually helps MMA a little bit because uh, the fanfare from pro wrestling uh, it's kind of MMA-esque anyways and, and then a lot of the fanfare from there comes over to the UFC and watches the UFC or MMA and, and then you know, it also is fun to watch some of the pro wrestling because there's a lot of cool moves that they do. Uh, obviously, it's show wrestling, but it's still it, it's uh, show wrestling, meaning like uh, it's the big show. Uh, it might not be 100% real, but but there's still a lot of parts of pro wrestling that are real, and there's and also the roots come from real wrestling too. So, uh, I think that, I think the two. A lot of people say, "Ah, oh, BS." Well, wait till you retire when you're done fighting and see what you're going to do. You know, you might even do some pro wrestling or you might go to movies. And it's the same thing. It's almost like pro wrestling because you're, you're doing uh, choreographed moves or you're doing work with people, uh, fight coordinating or whatever, and you're still doing martial arts, but it's coordinated now. That's, uh, was a, I think an interview with Brock Lesnar, he, he, he talked about being slammed from the top rope. And he says, well, That's again, real. How, how many people can do that? And that is real, and that it does take a toll. You know, I did pro wrestling, and I did uh, demonstrations, and I did stunt work, and I did pro fighting. And I got more hurt in pro wrestling, uh, demonstrations, and in stunt work than I ever did in a real fight. I love pro wrestling, so. <laughs> um, uh, thoughts on TRT cheating or an athlete's uh, prerogative? Well, TRT basically is, what, what it is, it's scientific. They are doing uh, blood work to see where your testosterone levels are today. A lot of people don't know where their, blood, their, their testosterone levels are, and a lot of people are actually really low. The older you get, the lower you go. So, uh, you know, the quality of life goes down. You, you sleep more, uh, or some people sleep less. Uh, you're tired all the time if your testosterone's low. It, it l makes you less physically uh, active and sexually active also so TRT I, I believe it can be good as long as it doesn't get out of control and it's got to be sanctioned and, and accepted and uh, you know people need to know what it is first of all because there's a lot of guys that are doing it now and uh, it's legal as long as there's a doctor involved but is it legal for fighting I don't know is it considered cheating if you have low testosterone and you're getting your levels up uh, through a doctor through blood work and blood testing and they're doing it uh you know, not anabolically, but maybe they're doing it through uh, HCG or DHEA or other ways of doing it. Maybe, uh, maybe that wouldn't be considered cheating then. But I think it does help. You know, especially, especially people who have never, uh, uh, let's say they're not fighting or have never fought or aren't planning on fighting. TRT is important just to get your levels checked where you're at. And it's also interesting to see about education. A lot of people throw the TRT and various other things. Well, they say it's cheating, so they go, oh, I'm not going to cheat. But, you know, I mean, what are vitamins for? They're to help your body. Uh, TRT is like uh, getting some sort of vitamin for your body if you're deficient. We need more education, I think. A lot of more education that. would be very good for everybody. Um, how do you think the two finalists from Strike Force Heavyweight Tournament would do in the current heavyweight division? Obviously, your boy Josh Barnett. I think it's all the same. I think, you know, guys are just fighting in different events because 
maybe one event won't have them or, or they're not in another event. But, you know, you take the heavyweight top contenders in, in every card, it would nice be nice to see them all fighting in one card. But if that will ever happen, nobody knows. Hopefully it will, because I want to see uh, Josh come out with some heavy metal. Yeah, and Cormier, Cormier coming in, and, you know, they took Alistair over, or Verdum, they brought him over. You know, so they're bringing guys from all over, you know. I just, I just basically want to see, from see somebody come in with some heavy metal again, you know. <laughs> Not too many guys come in with hip-hop and country music, you know. And, yeah. Uh, Josh Barnett will definitely bring Yeah, he, like, he likes the, uh, definitely yeah. loves the speed metal. Oh, yeah. I love that one. Um, as a sport grows, there are new MMA guys popping up, popping up all the time, all, all over the place. Any advice to anyone starting a gym, forming a fight team, or just getting into MMA for the first time, maybe seeing this video and thinking, I want to go and check that? Well, I think it's better to start a school that has separate martial arts, where you're teaching a grappling program, regardless if it's catch wrestling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, or Judo, or just wrestling. Uh, you have a boxing or a kickboxing program or a Thai boxing program, and then you have a combination of mixed martial arts. And then those that want to go to the next level can step up. Uh, I wouldn't, as a normal person, aspire to train fighters right from the get-go. People want to do that because it gives them fame and notoriety. Hey, I've got a guy fighting professional, and he's doing great. So everyone wants that, but um, in the end, when the bigger the fighters get, the harder it is to... Uh, manage and control them and they become kind of their own teacher and their own, you know, they, they take it upon themselves on a lot of their stuff. So uh, in the beginning, I, I think as a teacher, I would much rather in the beginning just train normal people that want to learn martial arts and those who want to step it up, then okay, then they need to be told, hey, here's what's going to happen. You need to train five days a week. You're going to get sore, you're going to get tired, you're going to get hurt. Uh, do you have what it takes, and do you know what it takes to go to the big leagues? And if you do, then this is the sacrifices that I need you to make and take. And then it's good to have peers that are also doing that. You know, uh, one, of a, one of a pro fighter's worst enemies is his ego. And, you know, some guys, their egos get so big, it's like, wow, you can't even control them. You know, you know they're, they're in the big show, and they're huge. You know... Personally, I like to train guys that are humble, that aren't super boisterous. Have I trained guys that were very boisterous? Yes, I have. Uh, I s try to stay clear of all that stuff. I just try to stay in being the coach, training the martial arts. Uh, am, I, am I in charge of teaching them how to think and how to act and how to talk? Uh, once in a while I am, but like... Uh, for some people, like big guys, like say Brock, for instance, no, I wasn't allowed to say anything. And people want to hear that stuff. People want to hear him talk. They want because he he was a pro wrestler. They want to hear that. Josh, same thing. They want to hear him say stuff. When they say stuff that's obnoxious or out of control, you know, that's not me. That's them. That's their personality sometimes. And, and some people want to say see it because it's controversial. You know, not everyone's going to say things that everyone agrees with. Yeah. But that's what makes it exciting, and that's also what makes it entertaining. That's quite interesting because at the, the end there we done a, a the macabre meditation from a sort of John John Val uh, John Val Jim, uh, Deck, Deck, the, the flower the of life, sort of flower of life, uh, sort of meditation, and a big part of the sort of old school martial arts is a lot to do with your, your Shiba Morishi, uh, Fenda Kido, all, all the meditation. Big part is you got when you're younger, you do the physical and the hard, and then you, you have to meditate. You, yeah, but meditation puts you back in your body it, it gets your motor running it makes you aligned it gets your chakras aligned uh puts you in in uh makes you actually get into your light body uh, or in touch with your light body to feel what it's like to actually be able to travel or to feel what it's like like a higher level of uh of ascension or learning or uh stepping out or dreaming and maybe stripping down the ego is the ego disappears and your ego disappears and you're right meditation and meditation and strips your ego that's a hundred percent true so just one last question for you eric thank you very much for your time this weekend sorry next weekend is a huge uh, ufc fight you've obviously got um a fantastic wrestler versus probably the most dominant uh middleweight of all time sanderson silver chael sonan um just quickly um which fighter and well uh, Anderson hasn't fought for what a year now 
and Cheryl's been chomping at the bit, fighting and fighting and uh, being very aggressive, uh, talking a lot, um, but that's entertainment. Yeah. He's, that's not really who he is. No, no, he, he, he's he's a know. nice guy. He just does that, you know, and, and it's, it's you know, me. listen, hey, sales when, w- yeah, it sells tickets. And when in your, when, when you're uh, on the front stage, what are you going to do? How are you going to act? You're going to be quiet and or are you going to start saying some things just to get stir some energy up and get people to watch it you know and that's what it is entertainment so uh uh chael's gonna come at him the same way if anderson can try to keep it on his feet and try to knock him out you know that would be great i think chael's got to get him on the ground the same way as he did before get him down and the fight's got to go on the ground so who's gonna win that fight uh i'm anxious to watch and find out excellent excellent uh, how can people get um know your your website and find out more about the tour dates etc uh, you could find out on ericpaulson.com uh, eric at ericpaulson.com is my email and uh, I'm on Facebook too strike throw grapple at yahoo.com or just punch in Eric Paulson you can find me on Facebook excellent thank you very much for the MMA show much appreciated thanks guys thank you. much for your time thank you